Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, we're going to learn the T command. And this is part of my Linux Crash Course series here on Learn Linux TV. In this series, I cover an important Linux related concept in each and every video. And today that brings us to the T command. The T command is very useful. It essentially lets you write information to the screen and a file at the same time. It's so useful in fact that I pity the fool that doesn't use this command. And just like always, in this video, I'm going to give you some examples of this command in action. And since the T command is relatively simplistic, this is going to be a shorter video, so consider this a skill that you could pick up very easily. I just love it when a plan comes together. And we'll get started with the T command in just a moment, but before we do, I need to make you aware of the fact that there's some brand new products in the official merch shop for Learn Linux TV. So for all of you distro hoppers out there, I got a shirt for you. I have a distro hopper shirt, but I also have shirts for coffee drinkers, like the Aptist All Coffee shirt. That one's pretty cool. A Fedora shirt, Arch Linux, there's all kinds of things, even backpacks, fanny packs, you name it. So support Linux learning and get yourself something nice. It's a win-win. And as always, thank you so much for checking out the shop and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Now it's time to get started and learn the T command. So let's get started. And the best way to learn any command, in my opinion, is to see it in action. But first, consider this command right here, ls. It's probably the simplest command that we have on Linux, and it's usually the one that most people learn first. Now, in this case, I executed ls, and it printed the output directly to the screen. So this is no different than any other time we've used ls. In fact, if I was to run sudo apt update, just like this, then that information is also being written to the screen. This is called standard output, and it's something that I covered in a different video. And also, like I covered in other videos, we can redirect output. So for example, I could do ls-l against the Etsy directory, as you can see, or what I could do is redirect that into a file. And now we have the file list file right there. And it has the same information in it. Now, nothing that I've gone over is new. This is just a quick refresher of some of the most basic Linux stuff. We have output, you know, standard output that's printed to the screen. We have standard input that comes from the user if they're entering in something. I'm not going to cover all the streams in this video because I've already covered that in another video that I'll leave a card for right about here. But what we're going to do is see how the T command can help us with the same thing. And sure, the ls command is not an exciting example, but don't worry, we'll get there. We'll start with a simple example and then work our way up from there. So let's see how we could do effectively the same thing with the t command. And with the t command, we'll start with any command basically. We're going to pipe a command into the t command just like that. And then we'll type a file name. I'll just call mine list2.txt. Doesn't really matter. I'll press enter and check it out. What I did with this command was execute ls, and that part of the command is no different. It's the same ls that we would execute any other time. The difference though, is we are redirecting the output of the ls command into the t command. What the t command will do at that point is grab the output from the ls command, it's going to print it to the screen, and then also it's going to dump that information into a file. So effectively, we are printing information to the screen and writing that same information to a file at the same time. Now, another easy example of the T command is this one. It has its own help menu. So when we access the help menu, it looks something like this. So we can see some of the options here, like append mode that we will be covering later. And there's a spoiler right here because it tells you exactly what it does. Dash A appends information to a file. But more importantly, if you run the T command by itself, along with dash dash help, you'll see this help menu right here. So if you ever forget some of the options, this is a good way to refresh yourself. Now the T command is very simple. It's one of those commands that's not really difficult to learn. In fact, what I've just taught you is everything that you need to know already. What makes the T command so great is basically what you can do with it. So depending on your imagination, you might use this a lot. Anytime you want to print information to the screen and also file, the T command is obviously a very good fit for that. 
But anyway, what I'm going to do right now is give you another example of the T command, and I hope this one will trigger your creativity. So what I'm going to do is type dpkg, and this command is specific to Ubuntu and Debian, by the way. So if you're not running on a Debian or Ubuntu-based distribution, you can simply watch what I'm doing and take notes. It's totally fine. We'll type dash dash git dash selections. And then what I'm going to do is redirect it into, you guessed it, the T command. And I'm going to save the output into packages.list. Now this command right here obviously has nothing to do with the T command. The T command is just receiving output from a command. The dbkg command is specific to Debian and Ubuntu. And the dash dash get selections option, what that's going to do is print a list of all the packages that we have installed in our system. So this one is useful. You can import this list into another installation if you wanted to. If the situation was that you wanted to have two servers with the same list of packages, with this command, we're going to export that list that we could then import into another system. So I'll press enter. And now you can see some of the packages that I have installed on my laptop here. I'm not going to go over all of those because it really doesn't matter for the sake of this example. Basically what we did is we ran a command that's going to pull a list of installed packages and then we redirected that into the T command, which will then print that same information to the screen and also a file. And this is also good for auditing. If you need to audit the packages that are installed in your servers, then this is one of the commands you could use to accomplish that. Similarly, what we could do, whenever we update our system and install updates, We can simply grab all the output, save it in the file, and that'll give us the ability to save the output in case we need to refer back to it later. Now, another thing that I want to make you aware of, and I'll go back to the very simple example for this, is the fact that you can write information to more than one file. Just like that. Now, if I list my storage, I have file one, file two, and file three right there. Those three files were created by the T command. And if I use the diff command to look at the differences between the files, there's no difference. They're the same file. And that's because the T command wrote the exact same information to each of the three files. Now that might not seem very useful, but consider this. Let's say we had a command like this. I'm going to change this up a little bit. Now, obviously I just made up those file names, but if you wanted to save the information in two places at the same time, for example, you wanted to capture the information, save it in a log file, but then you also had an NFS mount that had a reports directory and you also need to save a copy of it there as well. With this command, you could do both at the same time. Now, one thing to know about this command right here is that this command can easily fail if you don't have permission to the file you're trying to write to. So in the case of slash var slash log, depending on how your distribution is set up, you may or may not have access to create files there. So what we can't do in a situation where we don't have permission to a file is use sudo at the beginning of this particular command, because what's going to happen is sudo is only going to apply in this case to dbkg dash dash get selections. Sudo is essentially lost when we use the pipe symbol to redirect the output because we're redirecting the output, not the command. So we're taking the output of the first command as input to the T command. So because of that, the correct way that you would want to solve this particular permissions issue, if you did have one, is you would want to make sure that you have sudo in front of whatever it is you need sudo to access. So if you don't have access to the file, then the t command won't either. So I combined sudo with t on the right hand side, that's important, and that'll allow me to write information to this file right here if I didn't already have permission to do so. I just wanted to point this out because it's something that beginners often run into. Now finally, one last thing that I want to show you is the append option, dash a. I mentioned that earlier, and what that pertains to is append mode. Anytime you run the T command, by default, it's going to overwrite the file that you designate with whatever is in the output. It's going to replace the file. But if you add the dash A option, then that tells T to not replace the file, instead to append to the end of the file. So this way you could keep adding to a log file, for example, if that's something that you wanted to do. 
And there you go. There's our video. In this video, we went over the T command. And it's a simple command, as you just saw. This is a shorter video, but sometimes commands don't really take all that long to explain, but are still important to learn. Now, if you're enjoying this series so far, then how about you recommend it to other people? I think there's all kinds of people out there that could benefit from free Linux learning. And with over 70 episodes in this series, as of recording time, there's definitely a lot to learn. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.